بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا So today inshallah we'll be speaking about Surah Al-Kahf It is a Meccan Surah And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said regarding this Surah مَنْ حَفِظَ عَشْرِ آيَاتٍ مِنْ سُورَةِ الْكَهْفِ عُصِمَ مِنَ الدَّجَّالِ Whoever memorizes 10 verses from Surah Al-Kahf, he shall be protected from the false Messiah, Al-Masih Al-Dajjal. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in a hadith, مَنْ قَرَأَ سُورَةَ الْكَهْفِ فِي يَوْمِ الْجُمُعَةِ أَضَاءَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بَيْنَ الْجُمُعَتَيْنِ Whoever recites Surah Al-Kahf on a Friday, then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala will give him nur from that Friday till the next Friday. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala in this Surah is telling us about four stories. The first one is the story of the people of the cave. Then he moved on to the story of the man with the two gardens. Then the story of Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam and Al-Khidr. And the story of Dhul Qarnayn. And mainly the surah is focusing about the fitna and how we should be firm upon our religion and we should not be uh, affected by the fitna that we might be seeing in this life. And inshallah we will be speaking about different fitan, different trials and tribulation that will be facing uh, one uh, in this life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start this surah with the fitna of the dunya and how the dunya is temptation. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about the fitna of the society. So how the society and you know the peer pressure and uh, what people do can affect you as an individual and this will happen to the people of the cave where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said had they not have firm iman they would have been following their own people then the next fitna that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about in this surah is fitna tul julasa where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by saying وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِي So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was in the company of Bilal, of his like, and the people of Quraysh, they were coming. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to go and give them da'wah. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala told him, وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِي Be patient and be with those people that remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala during the day and during the night. And don't try to let the dunya take you, subhanAllah. Because nowadays, subhanAllah, this is quite evident. When you see someone with wealth, you know, you stand up for him, you give him proper salam. If it's someone else, you don't even give the salam back, unfortunately. So this is the fitna that we need to always be conscious of. The fitna of the money, the wealth, and the children. المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا So the beauty and the adornment of this life is by having wealth and children. So it is a fitna and that we should not be carried away with them from the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then fitna to shaytan. Shaytan, after he was commanded to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam, he refused and he said that I will lead people astray. And then fitna al-ilm. And subhanallah, this is the story of Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam and Al-Khidr. And Al-Khidr, there are two different opinions. One opinion to say that he is a prophet and another opinion to say that he is a righteous man, a wali from the awliya, Allah salihin. So what happened? Someone from Banu Israel questioned Musa alayhi salam. And he asked him, who is the most knowledgeable on this earth? So Musa alayhi salam, without waiting for the answer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rushed into the answer and he said, I'm the most knowledgeable person on earth, subhanAllah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wanted to test Musa alayhi salam. That was the fitna, that when you have knowledge and you think that no one knows more than you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala straight away tested him as if he said, 
O oh Musa, had you not waited for my reply, then I would have told you whether you were the most knowledgeable or someone else. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then instructed him to go to Majma' al-Bahrain and to meet Sayyiduna Khadr alayhi salam. And finally, the fitna of al-mulk. When you have kingdom, then that becomes fitna and you could abuse that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the example of Dhul Qarnayn. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَن ذُو الْقَرْنَيْنِ قُلْ سَأَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْهُ ذِكْرًا and two advices or two lessons that we could take from this surah. Whenever you want to do something, don't forget to say, Insha'Allah. وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدَ إِلَّا أَيَّ شَاءَ الله. If you plan to do something the following day, then don't forget to say, Insha'Allah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, when, when you see something that is nice, don't forget to say, Ma sha'a Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the story of the man with two gardens. وَلَوْلَا إِذْ دَخَلْتَ جَنَّتَكَ قُلْتَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the straight path and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us إِنَّهُ وَلِيُّ ذَلِكَ وَالْقَادِرُ عَلَيْهِ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمَ وَبَارَكَ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ربنا يا ربنا